I'm now delighted to introduce the moderator of panel one, uh, Jeff Kingsbury, chair of the ULI Sustainable Development Council and managing principal, Green Street Limited in Indianapolis. Jeff provides the general management for Green Street, a real estate development, brokerage, and consulting firm. Green Street is currently involved in public-private partnerships, including redevelopment of a 64-acre urban hospital campus and a $17 million education facility. Jeff's experience includes nearly 20 years in the planning and development of 30 urban, suburban, rural, and resort master plan communities throughout the United States, encompassing over 35,000 acres. He has managed the sale of $350 million in real estate. He is a nationally recognized expert in sustainable development best practices. He has worked on some of the leading sustainable development projects in the nation, including the 4,700-acre redevelopment of Denver's Stapleton International Airport, the, nation, the nation's largest urban redevelopment project. He has won three ULI awards for excellence. Jeff holds degrees in urban planning and development and environmental design from Ball State University. Jeff. It's my privilege and honor to introduce the panelists today. It's really an extraordinary group. Uh, I know uh, most of the folks uh, here on this panel, and they've had tremendous impact uh, nationally and internationally in terms of advancing uh, sustainable development. Norm Miller is VP of Analytics for the CoStar Group. Uh, he holds this newly created position uh, with CoStar, which is a public commercial real estate data and market analysis company headquartered in Bethesda. Uh, Norm also holds the Distinguished Research Professorship and is editor of the Journal of Sustainable Real Estate out of the University of San Diego. Dr. Miller has numerous academic articles, books, and articles in uh, uh, trade market publications on housing, brokerage, mortgage risk, valuation, sustainable real estate, and many other topics. His most recent book, Commercial Real Estate Analysis and Investment, is a leading graduate level textbook on a global basis. Dr. Miller has lectured globally and domestically and has worked extensively with various trade associations and became one of the first distinguished fellows of NIOP in addition to serving on the research committees of PREA, the ULI, and ICSC. Just to make the point about we're in the heartland of sustainable development, so I can see it here. Um, when you look at the uh, intensity of green buildings per stock, you can tell that Washington DC is just off the charts compared to the rest of the country as a percentage of the stock that we have. And of course, office is way ahead of industrial, way ahead of um, retail and multifamily, as, as you probably know. It, I'm not trying to embarrass anybody from these states, but these are the brownest states. This is where finding a, a green building uh, defined as Energy Star or LEED or Green Features would be pretty hard in South Dakota and North Dakota and Mississippi and um, you know as a percentage of the stock these are the the states where it's it's hard to find it and when you hear about corporations saying you know we have a mission we're gonna lease green uh, sometimes it's hard and, and they'll point to the fact that we're in the first inning of a nine inning game here and we're just getting started uh, the good news is that um, asking rents for the market as a whole are starting to tip up. And by the way, we've had two quarters of positive absorption in, in the office market, and um, that's good news. Now, of course, that leads uh, rents and NOI, net operating income, and it's going to be a while before you see all the fundamentals turn around, but it's, it's a positive sign. One of the positive signs, if you notice, LEED and Energy Star are increasing at or above the rate of, of the other properties. Here's one of the things you have to control for, though. If you're a property and lucky enough to have opened up in 2008, 9, or 10, look at the vacancy rates there, 43, 48, 73%. Since a lot of the newer office buildings have been open more recently, I can spin the statistics any way you want. I can take a group of properties and show you that lead and green doesn't pay off by picking a sample that's been built in the last five years and comparing it to the rest of the market. But if you control for vintage, we do see an absorption advantage. Vacancy also differs by market, and uh, the rental premiums also differ by market. And in some markets, there's no difference. In some markets, there are. Um, and here's some vacancies, and I'm gonna go quick. One of the ill-conceived notions is for a developer to take a, a B minus location and try to gold it up and you know, make it competitive when it's a B minus location. You can take a location that might be just a touch off and get some advantage, 
But um, you can't take a lousy location and just slap some green features on it and, and beat the market out. It's not quite that good. Unless maybe if you're in DC and the GSA has this mandate, I don't know how they're gonna hit that mandate. Um, so there's certainly an opportunity locally. When we do little surveys, and I work a little bit more with uh, NAOP, and ask people how quick of a payback do they want on green features, it's fast. People want a very fast payback. We're talking five years or more. And, and a lot of that has to do with uh, avoiding risk and worrying about which vendor and technology to pick. And um, we can discuss that more if you would like, Jeff. Here's the proof that we need that we're seeking. This is the, you know, the, the secret formula that we're all seeking. Are people more productive in better buildings, better ventilation, better air, better light? And there's been one study that, re that related lead buildings to health, and they found slightly positive results. I was also part of an early study where we found slightly positive results, but admittedly, it's hard to measure productivity. And, um, and that's one of the challenges. We can measure absenteeism and health issues, but, uh, but not productivity. I'll finish with one example and then turn it over to the rest of the panelists because I know we want to have a discussion. I wanted to give you one example of one building that has three trends in it. One is the force of the GSA, one is the force of being in Washington, D.C., and people like Harriet, and one is um, uh, good timing. So there's a building called Potomac Yard 1 and 2, an office building here in D.C., 654,000 gross leasable square feet, and it was leased up to 60% when it was sold 2005 for $213 million. It was built for $135 million in 2004, sold for $213.5 million in 2005, bought by J.P. Morgan. It just sold, according to our CoStar data, for $250 million. So it went up 17% during a time that the market dropped 24% for investment grade office property. Not bad. Um, of course, that's partially the tenants, the GSA, being in Washington, D.C. Um, but even against the Washington, D.C. index, it did pretty well. And I'm going to stay on schedule so that all my panelists have time. And thank you.